Thank you so much, Kate, for being here with us. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to bring this topic to my community, one that I'm really passionate about and I know that you're an expert in, about do less, create more, which sounds like a complete contradiction. <laughs> yes. Someone who has burnt out in my corporate career and then picked up my habits and moved into my own business and then burnt myself out in my business thinking I would have more freedom and more time. I'm all about your messages. I'm so, glad. I thought maybe you could start by sharing for people that are not familiar with your work or think that this does sound like a contradiction, do less, create more, what the basic premise of your teachings is around this and the work that you do. Yeah, so the basic premise is that we are animals and we are part of nature. And there's a wonderful quote, which has been a guiding light of mine for a long time from Lao Tzu that says, nature never rushes, yet everything gets done. Mm. And we have long since forgotten that we are part of nature and we have become overly identified with our minds and overly identified with our production and our results. And the work of do less is really realigning ourselves with the cycles and seasons of nature and the way that the earth works, the way that, that, the seasons work, the way that animals work, the animals of our bodies work, and using those to guide our productivity and our workflow, as opposed to letting um, our patriarchal, toxic capitalist ideas of how we should be doing things guide our productivity. Said perfectly and so succinctly, love all of it. So really interesting, you help a lot of women who are entrepreneurs, businesswomen, corporate career women, with how to be successful and really heart-centered work right without burning out and this idea of both what you're talking about like working with the cycles and working with nature but also um how you plan your work right and how you deliver your work yeah so really looking at uh two things uh, two different cycles one being the menstrual cycle and the other being the lunar cycle so you don't have to have a menstrual cycle in order for this apply, to apply to you. There's so many reasons, you know, people might not, whether they're nursing or pregnant or had a hysterectomy or postmenopausal or whatever. Um, so really, this is looking at the way, I mean, basically how I discovered this is I was like, you know, this is amazing how the menstrual cycle has these four phases and these four phases sync up with the four seasons and those four seasons sync up also with the four phases of the moon and the energetic imprint and i'll go through them in a second but the energetic imprint of the phases includes every step required to get a project done or create something and so i thought what a what a beautiful already ingrained in us even though we forgot framework for project management, essentially, and for organizing our workflow, like this is going on in our bodies all the time. This is going on on the planet all the time This is going on, you know, in our solar system all the time, why not use that to organize ourselves instead of um, these time management systems, which were created, you know, based on what it takes for a white man to get things done, who has like, full-time support at home doing all the other things, (laughs) you know? So it's just like not really based on actual life. So why not base our productivity on the way life works, you know, the way living things work. And so uh, basically how it works is there are these four phases and, and, and they are essentially, you know, the beginning, the launch, the wrap up and the rest. And so those four phases happen in a woman's body or a person who has a period's body every month. There's the beginning is uh, the follicular phase. The launch is ovulation. The wind down is luteal and the rest is menstrual. And in the lunar phases, the beginning is the waxing moon as the moon is getting brighter and bigger in the sky. The launch is the full moon. The wind down is the waning moon and the rest is the new moon. So we have that as this beautiful framework and structure to organize ourselves. And the cool thing is that we are hormonally different during those four phases. And so it primes us to be able to 
um, optimize our focus and attention in four very specific ways throughout the month that have four very specific benefits. Love. And what would you say to the woman, which was me before I read your book, who goes, Kate, I cannot organize my business projects perfectly to the four weeks of things I have to create and whatever, like my menstrual cycle is not in sync with the moon right now. And I'm like, okay, that's all over the place. And then I've got things I have to do at certain times of the month. And, you know, so there's like this practical thing and you're trying to, you're trying to weigh up how do I, where do I sit and how do I operate in that picture? Yeah. So I definitely do not organize my business projects exclusively according to my cycle uh, because, you know, I work with a team of 11 people and like, it's just not practical, right? (laughs) It's just just not practical. But I will say when I am mapping out my week and here's what I recommend for the women I work with. I work with thousands of entrepreneurs. When you map out your week, You want to have the overarching theme be the phase that you're in. Mm -hmm. Even if it's only 5% of your tasks, the way in which you'll do all of the things will shift. So we can come at it. You know, those days where you're just like, boom, boom, boom. Like I'm checking things off. I'm like excited. I'm ramped up. I'm whatever. Right. So you have those days. And then you have these days where you're kind of more dreamy and, like less verbal and not really wanting to talk to as many people, but really feeling inward. So those are the days you want to lean on your intuition and not overbook yourself. And so it really allows you to just have this flavor of how you're going about your work week. And it's far more important, I think, to address how you're doing things than what you're actually doing. Yes, so good. And then what I realized was after reading your book and I downloaded a tracker for my cycle, which I would never have done before. <laughs> Just like so I was like tracking my cycle. I'm like, "Oh yes, I do not feel like doing anything right now." And that's because this is where I'm at in my cycle and it's totally what she's talking about in the book. And in the past, I would be like, "Too bad you get up and get doing it and you're not being productive enough and you're not you know, making enough calls and you're not doing da, 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 and just shooting myself the whole way through the whole experience. And now it's just like this massive, your book and tracking this way is like a huge permission slip to just be completely in sync with who we really are. Yeah. And, and mother nature. And, and to be honest, I am one of the women who all the way through my twenties and thirties was like feminine cycles, what, whatever, like I'm hardcore in the masculine energy and I'm just do, do, do and wouldn't take time for it. And then I hit 40 and in the last couple of years, it's like the number of signs about, no, 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 you just cannot operate this way. And then I read your book and I was like, if I'd read this any earlier, I'd have been like, I don't get it. Now I'm just like, oh my God, I totally get it. You are like, where have you been all my life? (laughs) I love that. I do believe, I think we receive what we need to receive when we need to receive it. And I was very much like that too. I mean, I was so, I knew about aligning your life with your menstrual cycle before. I had read books about it, but I was like, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) What you just said is it's not like you have to plan your business to your cycle. It's like, there is a flavor or an overarching wave or theme happening in the week. And if you try to ride against it, good luck. You are going to be flat on your face. (laughs) Exactly. And it really like, we already have plenty to work against in terms of a culture that still has us believe that being born in a female body makes you less valuable. I mean, that's really very much still true in the world, even in places like New Zealand Mm -hmm. and the United States Mm -hmm. where gender equality is, you know, some of the best in the world, Mm -hmm. right? But the overarching reality is that we're just not there yet. Mm -hmm. And so why do we, why not like in our own bodies, in our own relationship with ourselves, actually affirm and celebrate who we are rather than go with the rest of the world telling us that the way we are is wrong. Yeah. And I think this is the intersection of your work between um, this understanding and honoring our cycles and working with our energy and working with nature and rather than trying to write against it, which in itself is exhausting, 
there's that and then there's this other aspect of uh, I don't know if it's a rejection you can tell me because it's your work but for me it feels like a re- like a, a wonderful liberating rejection of the hustle culture yeah I work my butt off and I love when I'm like in my groove and stuff and other people might call that hustle call it what you will but just the word hustle represents a culture to me which is just like my whole soul just wants to like <laughs> get away from it and I wanted to ask you what you would say to this because as I was reading your book I was like I can't wait to ask you what you <laughs> how you would reply to this somebody messaged me that I really care about my community and she's starting a business and the question went something to the effect of um, I'm starting this you know I'm starting out as an entrepreneur and I wanted to get your input on this I've read that if I want to be successful, I need to hustle and that if I'm really committed, I'll be working 100 hours a week. And all of my entire body, just like my skin crawled and I was just like, oh my good Lord. I was like, okay, with respect to whoever told you to do that, like I was like, try it and see how it works for you. Because I don't know, like I tried that and that is like a recipe for disaster. So with your work, like what is your response to that? kind of model because that's a model that a lot of business like a lot of female business women who are out there starting or even I'm 10 years into doing what I'm doing still getting that in your face and hearing that all around you and that's you have to constantly check yourself about your values and about what you know will actually get your results so that's the very last thing you said is what's the most important have you done a like, have you tried it and experimented? Is our 100 hours required to get you the results you want? Or could you analyze and identify the 20% that gets you 80% of the results and cut that down significantly? Mm-hmm. Because here's what I would say. The people who are saying you need to work 100 hours a week are identified in a paradigm where the more busy you are, the more valuable you are. But the busier you are does not mean you're getting better results. There are plenty of things that I can be busy with all day long that will not get me what I want. And so doing more things is not the path to success. Doing the right things that get the results is the path to success. And I would also say the aligned things, the things that light you up, the things that are your calling, you know. Like there are infinite numbers of things that we could do at any given time and infinite numbers of things, honestly, that we could do to grow our business. But there are only a few that are the right things to be doing at any given time. And if we are working 100 hours a week, the data shows that after 32 hours of work a week, we have a significant diminishing rate of return on the hours put in, which means that 68 of those hours are a wash. And then you get to the end of five years or 10 years or 20 years of that and you're sick. And then anybody who's gone through significant illness will tell you, you have nothing if you don't have your health Mm -hmm. and you'll wish you could go back and make a different choice. Yeah. And I think everything you're sharing there is really is a beautiful um, snapshot of your work and that you've got these this honoring of the cycles all that side of things uh choosing a different way representing a different way modeling that but you're really practical like in the book there's there's very specific practical things like the 80 20 like where are you going to get your best results from and two books which I love and I saw you reference them in your book are the the one thing uh and essentialism so those two books I think just dovetail really nicely with your work and um I wanted to also ask you about um, spirit, your spirituality and soul and intuition and bringing that into your business. Because sometimes I find I found that difficult in the past. And I know people sometimes ask me about that is what your take on, oh, I'm going to work now and I've got my business and I'm making money and I'm doing all these practical things in the world. And then over there is my practice of spirituality or soul. And you really are all about bringing that integrated into the business, right? Absolutely. I mean, to me, I, I work for the goddess. Like I don't, I don't run my company, but you know, God, goddess source, the universe, like I'm just showing up for my shift and then some greater energy that I'm part of, but 
is not 100% my responsibility is actually in charge in the end. What this helps me do is it helps me feel more calm. And when I feel more calm, I get, and so do you, a whole other rush of cerebrospinal fluid, all of the oxygenation in my brain is so much better. You know, when we are in our calm, rest it, rest and restore uh, parasympathetic nervous system, we can access our creativity and our possibility thinking and our problem solving capabilities in a way that we really cannot when we are in fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, call it woo woo, but quite frankly, I'll do anything that works that helps me feel calm and safe because I know feeling calm and safe is one of my greatest strategies yeah, totally. for business growth and for having an impact. Cause at the end of the day, like, you know, having a big business is, I mean, whatever, it's great. But to me, it's all about, you know, it's about service. It's about like how many other women can I set free from the cage of these self-imposed patriarchal models that are making us sick and exhausted. Like that's no way to live. We're mm -hmm. not meant to, we are, we were not designed to be sick and exhausted. Yeah. Yes. You're, on, you're on such a beautiful mission. And I really, I really get that and really honor and respect it because you're right. There are, there are millions of people caged by that paradigm. It's not working. It makes people sick and there is another way. And even when I step out and I finally now in my business, I'm not running the model that I had when I was in a corporate job. It took a long time to break it. It took it a does. long time to break the urge and compulsion to attach outputs to personal value and to attach the more you do, the more successful. Oh no, that is not how it works. <laughs> it's like, I do way less now and get way better results. I said to my husband, I've got so much extra time. This is crazy. Things are happening and it's just so expansive and I'm doing this and go figure. So um, the other thing I was going to ask you about... Um, was the saying yes and saying no. So, you know, you would know because you will get inundated with opportunities, requests, business things, people wanting your time and your energy, clients, whatever it is. Um, around saying yes and no, because you said something and when I actually marked it, I mean, I've marked your book like with a million things. But one of the things you've said either in your book or on your social media was saying yes to too many things is self-sabotage. And I was like, oh, that is like really hitting home saying yes to too many things is self-sabotage so how do how do you recommend people tune in to what do I say yes to because there are a million people saying in my business or in my life I should be doing these things yeah. oh no don't do these things do these things and so it's like you really are committed and you really want to do well and you're like I don't know which is the way because there's contradictory information how do you make your so, like well that? I mean I think there's like several different I could say so much on this. I could talk for hours about this, but I'll, I'll give you some bullet points. So number one, I find it really helpful to align myself with either, um, you know, my astrological chart or human design um, or both. I, I'm, I'm a st student of both to know like what is in my highest and best from a more, you know, soul cosmic imprint perspective, you know, because when I have readings with someone good, I really get to know myself better. And it's like, yes, there are a hundred million ways to do things, but, but based on who I am, here's the best way for me. And that really helps to cut down on all the noise, especially about the marketing ideas or mm -hmm. the strategies or the, all the different ideas I have. I mean, I have a hundred million ideas, not to mention all the ones that people come in with. Right. So that helps. I love I love a good like astrological reading, human mm -hmm. design reading to really get clear on, okay, our soul imprint. Then I also love from a business perspective, I know who my ideal customer avatar is. So I know who my customers are. So I, if somebody was like, I want to bring you to this, you know, tractor convention to speak, like I don't really, the, my ideal customer avatars are not tractor people. Mm -hmm. So my people are not there. So it makes it really easy to just be like, no, I'm not going to go do that because those are not my people. My people are ambitious, recovering type A entrepreneur, entrepreneurs who identify as female. 
those are my people. And so where, where those people are, I will say yes to that opportunity. Not always, but there's more filtering questions. So the other one is, um, where am I in my cycle? Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, like I really map out in advance. My cycle is not exactly on the, on the button. So I only know kind of like a few days here and there. So, but I map out, like when I get my period, I map out a month, you know, 28 days in advance or 26, whatever. And I mark out the few days in my calendar where I just say it's off limits, like a month from now. And then I know not to fill that time. And if there's already stuff scheduled, I see what I can reorganize. Mm -hmm. So that also is a big factor. And then also, again, I know my 80-20. So I know that 20% of my actions lead to 80% of the results. And 20% of my actions are creating content and connecting. So doing something like this, this is a yes. Because historically speaking, when I look at my business, first of all, I love it. So that's a good reason to do it, right? Like I just, it lights me up. I love talking to people. I'm just, I'm about it, right? I'm an extrovert. That's who I am. So I always feel better after having a conversation like this. So that's a reason to do it, even if it didn't have any other result. Mm -hmm. Feeling good is a great result. (laughs) Um, But I also happen to know from looking at my business historically that we get customers from me showing up on podcasts. And so it helps also spread the message. The book sells more, people join our list, they follow on social media. So like, I know this is a good use of my time. And then creating content is also a good use of my time because it is what drives the boat in terms of our message reaching more people and affecting their their lives and certainly growing our revenue. So those two things, if it's involving creating content or connecting, it's, it's more likely. And then in terms of um, requests that come in, I mean, this is getting really nitty gritty, but it might be helpful to people. Um, we have kind of a, a rubric in terms of in our company and we'll just look at, you know, is this, is this an opportunity where, where diverse voices are being celebrated and, and welcomed? Um, I, I won't do it if historically this platform has not celebrated, you know, and brought in all different kinds of voices. If it's been all white men on a podcast, for example, I'm a no, um, for example. So, and so that's one, um, two, are they reaching my ideal customer? You know, three, of course, what's the reach and what's the, you know, are they brand new? Is this their first interview? Then probably not, but all of those things are a little bit more nitty gritty, but I love having filtering questions because that also allows me to tell my team what the filtering questions are. And then fewer things land on my desk to even make decisions about like, The fewer decisions we can have in a day, the better. Mm -hmm. So I try to really make clear criteria so that I can empower my team to make those decisions for me, knowing that every now and again, they're going to say no to something that I would have said yes to, but I trust it'll come back around if it was meant to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. What I love about it is that it's so, um, there's so much clarity and okay, what works for me? What doesn't work for me? What moves the lever on my business? What doesn't? Uh, What am I about personally? What are my values? Why am I doing this in the first place? And then as soon as you know that, it's like super easy to, like you say, filter those things and have have good boundaries, right? Because boundaries are. The other thing is, it's like I am not my business, and that took me a long time to step away from. Me too. As long as you feel like that, like it's all very enlivening for the first few years, and then it's like, oh my god, where where am I? (laughs) Where am I? <laughs> Where did I go? Yeah, your your business kind of like eats you up. Yes, it eats yeah. you up. And it's sort of and it's like very fulfilling on one hand. But for example, in the last um 18 months, I'm like, oh my God, my long suffering husband. I was like, oh my God, darling, like it went customers, clients, me, my dog, and then like, oh my poor husband, it's like this beautiful man I've been with for 17 yeah. years. And it's now like me and my husband and my dog, <laughs> my business and my right. community. And it's just like re and, and now I bet your business is doing better. Oh my gosh, it's outrageous because- Isn't it's, that amazing? Do less. So when I was like reading your book and I was like, do less credit more, I was like, oh, this, this is absolutely truth. Like it's evidence, right? But what it took was all the things that you're saying which I had to get to, which you're teaching me, which is like, what moves the lever? What's the 80, 20, you know, all these types of things in order to get to that point. Yeah. And the scary thing is, is how long I spun my wheels for years. 
before I learned those things, burning out, doing a lot, not getting the kind of results that I wanted. Sure, helping people. But my view is if you're trying to help people, and I'm sure it's the same for all your clients and your, um, and your business and your membership that you help, if you're helping a lot of people and you're burnt out, that's not helping. It's like, you know, no. like if, if you're excluding yourself. That's not like aligned. With no, it's almost like you're passing along a tainted, you know, let's say you had like, let's say each of our work for a metaphor is, is a, is like a medicine. And, and if you are delivering the medicine and you're in a state of burnout, it's almost like you're delivering a tainted or, or expired medicine it's what you're passing along is not as potent as it could be and could actually I mean I don't want to you know whatever it could be harmful right so maybe not but anyway (laughs) I don't want to freak people out (laughs) but energy though like your every energy matters energy and if you create something and the energy you create it from is I'm burned out and I come last and my (laughs) my life is a mess it's not it's not great right so um I also loved all the things in your book about the evidenced research around things. I mean, it's just a no brainer, right? You're reading it and going after X amount of hours, I just become unproductive. What the hell am I doing, doing the extra hours, right? So can you maybe tell us how people can get started with you and your work and, and um, if they want to learn more and then, I mean, I've got your book here. I highly recommend people read it. It's a fantastic book, Approach to Time and Energy Management for Ambitious Women. Definitely get into that. Um, What else? How can people get started with you? How can they work with you? Well, so the first thing I recommend is, you know, my work is really about healing your relationship to work and time. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing you can do is you can just head over to my website, katenorthup.com forward slash um, ritual, and you can download for free a weekly do less planning ritual. And that will takes about 11 minutes. It's not like a long process, but it helps to begin to practice the new paradigm. And over time, this, this does take practice. I mean, I love anything that promises instant results, but usually that's a lie. So (laughs) this is the kind of thing that just takes a little practice over time, like a meditation practice, like exercising, you know, it just takes a little time. So the do less weekly planning ritual, I really recommend starting with that Mm -hmm. because it's free and it really introduces you to the do less methodology in a very practical way to set up your week that way. And then from there, um, you know, of course I have my book, Do Less. I have the Do Less Planner system. So you can have, you know, these tools in front of you, the daily energy tracker that you were mentioning, um, the, the, the physical Do Less Planner, we get those back in the fall. Um, those are like a once a year, once a year mm-hmm. thing. And then my membership origin collective is the place where I gather, gather people to learn and have community around this new way because the hustle culture is pretty pervasive in the online business world. Mm -hmm. And so this is the place to practice and develop and, and discover a new way where we grow our businesses while doing less. So we practice the 80, 20 rule. We practice alignment, uh, getting, getting in relationship with our calling, um, cyclical planning for sure, cyclical alignment, and really all the do less ways of running your business. Like there's a do less lever for almost any, you know, for webinars, for online challenges, for content creation, for all of the little things have these little, I don't want to call them hacks Mm -hmm. because it's not really hacking. It's just like these little ways that you can get a bigger result with less effort. So that's what we, that's what we do in origin. Yeah, smart strategies. And what I love about that is it's not like you're just teaching a philosophy of do less and helping people to kind of plan their things more. It's like for online business people and business people, and here's how you can apply it to this kind of part of your business, this type of event-based business, this type of marketing strategy. That's the cool part. So um, we do have a lot of people in my community who are running their own business or want to start their own business or just started their own businesses. So I definitely recommend your work for that. Uh, for getting that right early on because of uh, I was like where was she when I I had come across this years ago I was hustling right alongside (laughs) I was (laughs) you were probably right there and I was doing your amazing work and I was so busy whirlwinding over there that I didn't look (laughs) so I'm going to put links with this um, video session to all of that to Origin Collective to your book to your website 
I've downloaded that ritual um, starter kit thing that you mentioned as well. It's very good. I love that. So I definitely recommend people check that out. So your time is so precious. I'm so grateful that you were willing to come and spend a little bit of it with us in our community. And uh, I highly recommend people connect in with you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Bernadette. This was great. Awesome.